CPT hours. Harrisburg University does not allow students to work more than 40 hours per week on CPT. This is because your academic program is a full-time program and it um, is your priority as an F1 visa holder. So 40 hours is the maximum number of hours that you can work per week. Um, if you have not already participated in OPT at the master's level and you wish to do so, you do need to limit your full-time CPT to 11 months, 29 days. The rest of the time in the program, you can participate in part-time CPT, which is less than 20 hours per week. Um, part-time CPT does not affect your eligibility for OPT after graduation. Keep in mind that the government only allows you to participate in OPT one time at each graduate level. So if you've already done OPT at the master's level, unfortunately, you cannot do it again. Um, but that means there's no limit on your CPT hours. You can do part-time or full-time CPT for the duration of the program. Next. Um, so once you've been accepted to the university, you will need to go through the CPT application process before your CPT I-20 can be issued to you. Um, at Harrisburg University, that process includes first submitting what's called the academic work placement form. That's a short form that you and your employer will fill out together and you'll submit that to the university registrar. They will verify that your job description and your position align with your um, degree program, since that is a requirement of CPT. Once your academic work placement has been approved by the registrar, you will be able to submit your CPT authorization request to the International Student Office. That is all done online in your student portal. Um, and then once your CPT is approved, the university will issue your new CPT I-20 as early as the first day of the program. It cannot be issued prior to the program start date. So, just keep that in mind. CPT is available from day one of the program if you've submitted all of the required documents and paid the semester tuition in full. I recommend starting the CPT process at least two weeks before your program start date so that there are no delays in starting your CPT and you can avoid gaps in your employment authorization. Next. The program, um, again, is a two-year program. It's six semesters. The semester tuition cost is $5,480. Um, and that cost is the same every semester. There are no payment plans or installment plans. So the semester tuition is due in full by the start of each semester. Next. So for the application process, um, you will work directly with Go Elite. Uh, you can reach out to them and they will provide free consultation and advising. Um, I think I'll actually let Celine jump in here and talk more about that process since they'll be working directly with you. Um, sure, so Go Elite provides 600 um, exclusive scholarship for students who are interested in um, Harrisburg University and apply to us. So um, if you're interested in Harrisburg University, please reach out to us. We provide free consultation. Thank you, Celine. So again, you can, if you're interested in applying to Harrisburg University, you can reach out directly to Go Elite and they will help you through the process. Um, part of that process includes filling a personalized DocuSign application form. So once you receive that application form, you will need to fill it out completely and you'll upload all of your supporting documents. And I'll go through those documents in just a moment. Next. So here's a list of those um, required documents for the application. Again, you'll fill out the DocuSign application form and you'll need to upload a goal statement. Um, that's a one-page document. 
um, just kind of outlining your goals, your academic and professional goals and why you want to study at Harrisburg University. You'll need to upload copies of all of your degree certificates and transcripts. That includes um, foreign transcripts. If you have studied in the US and graduated from your program, your degree, your transcripts need to show the degree conferral date on the transcripts themselves. Um, and then you will need two letters of recommendation. Those can come from academic or professional sources. They need to be current and signed. Um, you will need to upload as well a copy of your professional resume, which I assume most of you already have. If not, you can put that together and upload that in DocuSign. Um, you'll need proof of English proficiency as well. We accept the IELTS exam, the TOEFL exam, and Duolingo. Um, you'll also need a copy of your passport, your visa, I-20, and I-94 um, for those students who are already in the U.S. And finally, you'll need a bank statement showing a minimum of $27,040. Um, you can use personal bank statements or sponsor bank statements. If you use a sponsor bank statement, they will also need to provide an affidavit of support, which is an official affidavit form from the university. Um, just a little bit of additional information about these required materials. If you have earned a degree from a U.S. university, the goal statement letters of recommendation, and proof of English proficiency can be waived, um, as well as the foreign transcript evaluation. Um, but otherwise, everything else is required and should be included in your complete application packet. Unfortunately, if the application packet is incomplete, we are unable to process it. So Make sure that you, when, when you fill out the DocuSign application form and upload the supporting documents that everything is there, otherwise it will delay the process. Next. Once you've been accepted, um, you can request your I-20 from the university. If you are outside of the country and need to um, apply for an F-1 visa, as soon as you have been accepted, you can pay a $200 deposit and request your I-20 from the International Student Office. If you are already in the US and are transferring to Harrisburg University, you will need to first transfer your CVS record to Harrisburg University, and then the university can issue your I-20. Um, again, for CPT I-20s, those cannot be issued prior to the program start date since CPT is um, not approved earlier than the program start date. Next. So for more information, um, feel free to contact us and we provide, um, we are Harrisburg University Office Department and we provide free consultation, free apply, free application progress track and 600 exclusive go elite scholarship. Yeah, and here's the contact information. Um, if you have any question about Harrisburg University, please now submit your question and we will share the question to um, Justin. He will answer it right now. Okay. Um, I saw we have lots of questions. Let me share the question sheet. Just a second. Okay, we have a couple here. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, the first question student asked is, can international students apply for scholarship or financial aid? That's a great question. So unfortunately, Harrisburg University does not have any scholarships or financial aid available for international students. However, um, you are welcome to apply for scholarships outside of the university or academic loans as well. Keep in mind that these programs do include an integral practicum component, um, which for F1 students is CPT. 
that allows you to work off campus um, in a paid employment position related to your area of study. So that really helps to offset the cost of the program. And you know, most of our students graduate from the program debt free because they are participating in CPT. Um, they're you know building their career and their resume, but they're also helping to pay for their tuition along the way. Okay, the next question is, is there any publication requirement for the PhD program? Yes, you can actually um, learn more about the PhD program on the university website itself. The website is harrisburgu.edu. Um, the next question is, can HU sponsor J-1 visa for its PhD students? Harrisburg does not sponsor J-1 visa holders for any degree programs. J-1 visa holders are not permitted to enroll in a full course of study. So um, you will need to change your visa status to F-1 before you can enroll in any program at Harrisburg University. The next question is, it is necessary for a student to complete a project consecutive, um, or can student take a semester off during the program? So the programs at Harrisburg University are delivered in a cohort format, which means that um, you know, students will take three semesters per year and complete the program in two years. Um, it is recommended that you stay with your cohort and complete the program in two years. If there is an, a need to take a break, for example, a medical emergency or um, like an annual vacation that is allowed um, under USCIS regulations, but you will need to work with the International Student Office and the University Registrar to get that break approved. Um, in terms of the project, um, I'm not sure what the student is referring to in terms of completing a project consecutively, um, but you will participate in CPT while you study. Great, and um, the next question is, can you also talk about the DBA and other doctoral, doctor level programs? Yeah, Harrisburg University actually does not offer a DBA program. Um, but we do have a few PhD programs. The majority of the students who are accepted to the PhD programs are graduates of Harrisburg University. So um, if you're interested in those PhD programs, I would recommend first completing a master's degree at the university and then applying to those programs. If you want to learn more about the PhD programs, you can visit our website at harrisburgu.edu. Okay, the next question is, why the tuition increase this semester? Can I apply for a scholarship? That's a good question. So Harrisburg University actually had not increased their, their semester tuition in more than 10 years. Um, so the university tries to keep the tuition cost as low as possible, um, but with you know increased operating costs, they, they had no choice but to increase it. It was a very small increase. Um, so the semester tuition is now $5,480 per semester. Um, again, there are no scholarships available or financial aid. Yeah, for this question, um, this student, please contact us. We provide 600 exclusive scholarship for um, Harrisburg University. And the next question is, is internship required for international students? F1 status, what is the waiver requirement? Yes, so CPT or the practicum component is an integral part of the program and participation is required. If you are, well, regardless of whether you're an F-1 visa holder or if you have a different visa status, um, the practicum component is still an integral part of the program and it is required. If for some reason you are unable to obtain an internship or employment, um, for example, maybe you lose your job at some point during the program or something like that, you will need to submit a waiver to the university. 
um, and that waiver has to be approved in order to um, temporarily waive that requirement from your program. Okay, um, the next question is, how early you can start the CPT per 30 days in advance of school start date? Harrisburg University does not allow early CPT. So um, you can start CPT from day one of the program. That is the earliest. The next question is, what will happen if COS for F1 status is still pending prior to the school start? That's a great question. So if your current visa status allows you to study, you can go ahead and start the program while the change of status is pending. Um, however, if your current visa status does not allow you to study, then you will need to defer your admission to a later intake while you wait for the change of status to be approved. Um, and the university can assist you with the, the deferment process if needed. Okay, um, the next question is, the CPT internship needs to be paid or could it be non-paid job? That's a great question. So with curricular practical training, um, it does not need to be a paid employment um, situation. It can be, but you can also do um, volunteer work. You can do um, an unpaid internship. You can do an unpaid practicum. So there are a lot of opportunities whether it's paid or unpaid, to fulfill the practicum component of the program. Just keep in mind that whatever you choose to do, whether it's you know volunteer work or an internship or employment, it must be related to your area of study. Okay, the next question is, can my employer professor send recommendation letter directly to you? It's preferable that you collect the signed letters of recommendation and upload them in DocuSign with your other supporting documents. That way there's no delay in the application process. If you send the letters of recommendation separately or directly to us, they, um, it, it delays the process because we can't review your application until everything is there. Um, if your employer or your professor is not comfortable um, providing you with the letter of recommendation and they want to send it separately, those letters can be sent to hms at harrisburgu.edu. Okay, the next question is, if I get why my F1 status, can I defer my enrollment to next semester if I don't have a job or I have to start immediately? Um, so this is a little bit of a tricky question. If, if you entered the country on a new F1 visa in initial status, you must enroll in your program within 30 days of entering the country. Um, so in that case, once you've entered the country, you cannot defer. Um, again, if you are unable to find employment right at the beginning of your program, you can fill out the work placement waiver, um, which will give you additional time to secure employment. If you are a transfer student who is already in the US, then, um, you know, again, you're, you can fill out the waiver if you don't have employment on day one of the program, that's fine. Um, but if you prefer to defer your admission, that, that can be done as well. Okay, um, the next question is, when will the Saturday on-site requirement be back? It is anticipated that the university will remain online through the remainder of the academic calendar, which ends in May. Um, USCIS has authorized universities to deliver their programs in the online format through the end of the year. So um, it's anticipated that the university will continue in that format until May. However, they could decide to cha change at any time um, 
which would require students to resume in-person classes. I see. Okay, the next question is, do I need to reapply the CPT if I change my employer or renew my F1 visa back to my home country during the master program? You don't need to update your CPT information if you renew your visa. However, if you change your employer at any point during the program, you will need to submit a new CPT authorization request to the International Student Office. Um, they will need to update your CPT with the end date of your previous employment and the start date of your new employment and update the employer details um, in SEVP. Okay, the next question is also the last question. Um, hi, Justin. Um, my current OPT expires at February 2023. I would like to attend early spring semester of Harrisburg, which starts on um, January 7, 2023. In this case, in order to get CPT on the first day of school and work for my current employer at the same time, do I need to prepare a potential unpaid leave? That's a great question. So if the student's OPT ends in February, they're kind of right in the middle of early spring and late spring. So they can choose to join the program in January or in March. However, if the student does not want to experience a gap in their employment authorization, then they should start in January. Um, so in this case, you would need to have your CVIS record transferred to Harrisburg University by January 6th. Once your CVIS record has been transferred, your OPT will effectively end. Um, and then you can start CPT as early as January 7th. So that way you would not have any gaps in your employment authorization. You would end OPT on January 6th and start CPT on January 7th. Um, and again, you need to submit your um, CPT request at least two weeks before the program start date, just to ensure that there are no delays in getting your CPT I-20 on the first day of the program. Okay, um, two more questions. Um, so what is the earliest date should I prepare for the financial proof? Should it be three months at most before the apply date or the start date of the CPT program? So when you submit your DocuSign application form, you are required to update or upload um, proof of financial support, bank statements, and an affidavit of support. Your bank statements at the time of application should not be more than two months old. Um, okay, the next question is, I get my F1 visa in 20. Um, 17, can I only take the online course throughout the program? So I'm assuming that this student has remained in the country since 2017 and has not left. Um, if the student has remained in the country, then they can continue or they can join the program fully online as long as the university is delivering it in that format. However, and again, that's only for COVID, but once the university resumes the hybrid format of the program, the student will be required to attend the in-person weekend sessions one Saturday per month. Got it. Um, the next question student asks is, can I change my CPT employer sponsor during the semester? Yes, you can change your employer at any point during the program. Um, however, you will need to notify the International Student Office of your last day of employment so that they can update your CVIS record. And you'll also need to submit a new CPT authorization request, um, as well as the academic work placement form, so that they can verify that your new employment is related to your area of study, and they can issue a new CPT I-20 with the details of your new employer. Okay, um, the next question to then ask is, do I need to leave United States to transfer or renew the F1 visa? 
No, if you are currently enrolled at a US university or are participating in OPT, your SEVIS record should be in active status. Even if your visa has expired, you can remain legally in the country as long as your SEVIS record is in active status. So once you've been accepted to Harrisburg University, you can go ahead and transfer your active SEVIS record to Harrisburg University, um, and you do not need to leave the country. If your visa expires, um, again, you can stay in the country legally as long as your SEVIS record is active. But if you leave the country, you will need to renew your visa before you can get back in. Okay, um, the next question is, if I am changing my visa type from H1B to F1, for the same question, if I got my cost um, F1 approved, do I need to start right away or can I defer to the next master if I don't have a job offer? Um, that's a great question. If you are applying for change of status from within the US, um, I believe you can defer to the next start um, once your F1 is approved. If you have not found employment, again, you don't have to defer your admission. You can submit the waiver form, um, which will allow you to waive the the practicum component or the CPT component um, in your first semester. However, if you change your status to F1 through stamping at a U.S. consulate, you are not permitted to enter the country more than 30 days before the program start date, and you must enroll in your program within 30 days of entering the country. So once you've entered the country, you cannot defer your admission. Okay, um, the next question is, does, does the master program have to last two years? Is there any way that I can graduate earlier? The, the programs at Harrisburg University are delivered in a cohort format. Um, so students are enrolled in three semesters per year, spring, summer, and fall. Um, and each semester you will take two, three credit courses um, and you'll take them at the same time. It's not possible to take more than that, more classes per semester because of the delivery model of the program. So the fastest that you can complete the program is two years. The next question is, I'm currently holding a F2 visa when I receive I-20, do I need to leave the United States to change um, to F1 visa? That's a good question. So in order to change your status from F2 to F1, you have two different options and you'll need to notify the International Student Office of the option that you choose. Um, if you want to go for F1 stamping at a US consulate, your I-20 will list initial as the reason or initial attendance as the reason on your I-20. Um, that I-20 can only be used for stamping at a US consulate. If you are applying for change of status from within the US using USCIS form I-539, then your I-20 will list change of status as the reason on the I-20. So again, you'll need to notify the International Student Office which option you are choosing, whether that's stamping at a consulate or change of status from within the US. Keep in mind that F2 visa holders are not permitted to enroll in a full course of study. So you must change your status to F1 before you can actually start the program and enroll in classes. Um, also keep in mind that if you are applying for change of status from within the US, that process is currently taking more than a year. So I would recommend consulting with an immigration attorney to determine the best option and timeline for you. 
Thank you, Justin, for all the detailed information and the patient process of Harrisburg University. Um, I believe we all have a better understanding of Harrisburg after today's info session. And if you have any question, um, please scan the QR code here. Um, we provide free consultation and also the 600 scholarship. Thank you all again for attending today's info session. Thank you, Justin. Have Thank a great you. evening. Thank you.